Christmas is just a few weeks away, and lots of people practice the Secret Santa tradition. Everyone draws a name out of a basket and gives a present anonymously. You get a gift, but you don't know who gave it to you. It came from your Secret Santa. Did you know that Islam has a Secret Santa? In fact, Islam has the most spectacular Secret Santa ever. Islam's Secret Santa saved all of us from being destroyed. What an awesome gift. We would have been annihilated, but someone came to our rescue. We might as well call our wonderful benefactor Islam's secret savior. You probably haven't heard much about Islam's secret savior. He kind of works behind the scenes, and Muslims don't like talking about the amazing gift he gave us. You can compare this with Christianity, where Christians talk about their savior all the time. Christians give thanks to their Savior. Strangely, Muslims don't. They keep his identity a secret. I don't like secrets, especially when it comes to someone saving me from destruction. I want to know who it was so I can thank him for his generosity. Fortunately, the Muslim sources give us all the clues we need to identify our hidden hero. Do you know who it is? No, it's not Allah. As you'll see in a moment, Islam's secret Savior rescues us from Allah. Allah's about to destroy us, but someone saves us. Can you guess who? No, it's not Muhammad. Muhammad said in Sahih al-Bukhari 2753, I cannot save you from Allah's punishment. Muhammad was helpless, powerless, feeble, useless. Friendless, brainless, helpless, hopeless. Not a hero at all. So, who saved us from Allah's destruction? Who is our secret savior? Well, let's think about why Allah was going to destroy us in the first place. Here are two ahadith from Sahih Muslim, where Muhammad says that Allah will destroy people for not sinning. For not sinning. Sahih Muslim 6621. Abu Ayyub Ansari reported that Allah's messenger said, if you were not to commit sins, Allah would have swept you out of existence and would have replaced you by another people who have committed sin and then asked forgiveness from Allah, and he would have granted them pardon. Sahih Muslim 66.22 Abu Huraira reported Allah's messenger having said, By him in whose hand is my life, if you are not to commit sin, Allah would sweep you out of existence and he would replace you by those people who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from Allah, and he would have pardoned them. Muhammad tells his followers that Allah wants them to sin so he can show them forgiveness. According to Muhammad, if we hadn't sinned, Allah would have wiped us out and replaced us with people who would sin so that he could forgive them. Allah needs us to sin. He can't be merciful without sinners. Allah depends on human creatures without whom he apparently cannot be a complete deity. Allah's message to sinners then is... You... complete me. Oh, shut up. You had us at slay the infidels wherever you find them. Allah is so desperate for us to sin, he's ready to destroy us if we refuse. This means, of course, that unless we want to be destroyed, we need to sin. If we don't, we're dead. So why are we here right now? Why hasn't Allah destroyed us? Allah hasn't destroyed us because we sinned. But why did we sin? Let's go to the Quran. Surah 2, 35-36 we said, O Adam, dwell thou and thy wife in the garden, and eat of the bountiful things therein, as where and when ye will. But approach not this tree, or ye run into harm and transgression. Then did Satan make them slip from the garden, and get them out of the state of felicity in which they had been. Surah 7, 19-22 O Adam, dwell thou and thy wife in the garden, and enjoy its good things as ye wish. But approach not this tree, or ye run into harm and transgression. Then began Satan to whisper suggestions to them, in order to reveal to them their shame that was hidden from them before. He said, 
Your Lord only forbade you this tree, lest ye should become angels, or such beings as live forever. And he swore to them both that he was their sincere advisor. So by deceit he brought about their fall. Why did Adam and Eve sin, according to the Quran? They sinned because Satan tempted them. What if Satan hadn't tempted them? Allah would have destroyed them and replaced them with people who would sin so he could forgive them. So who saved Adam and Eve and all of their descendants from being destroyed by Allah? Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. No, it's Satan, misunderstood jinn, who came to Earth to rescue us from Allah. And why do we sin today? We sin because Satan tempts us. In the Quran, after Satan was judged, he vowed to lead people like me astray. Surah 15, 39. Satan said, O oh my Lord, because you misled me, I shall indeed adorn the path of error for them, mankind, on the earth, and I shall mislead them all. But we shouldn't be upset about being misled. If we didn't listen to the devil, Allah wouldn't be able to forgive us. Then he'd get mad and destroy us. So, if Islam is true, we shouldn't hate the devil. We should be thanking him. We wouldn't be here without him. Our friends, our spouses, our children. Allah would have destroyed them all if it weren't for good old Satan. He's our secret savior, our hidden hero, our undercover ally. It's an absolute dream. But wait, there's more. If Allah wants human beings to sin so he can forgive us, who would his ultimate enemy be? Someone who refuses to sin. If Muhammad was right, Allah's greatest adversary would be Jesus, because Jesus just wouldn't sin. According to Muhammad in Sahih al-Bukhari 3286, Satan touches everyone who enters the world except Jesus. He couldn't touch Jesus. Adam sinned, Noah sinned, Abraham sinned, Moses sinned. Muhammad sinned like it was a sport. Guess he really didn't want to be destroyed for not sinning. Safety first. That's my motto. All of the prophets sinned except Jesus. So Allah can forgive all of them except Jesus. Jesus simply wouldn't obey Allah's command to disobey. That's too bad because Allah tells us what the penalty is for not sinning. I must break you. Go for it. Muslims claim to love God and to honor Jesus and to despise Satan. But if we look just a little more carefully at what the religion teaches, we find that their God wants us to sin and he threatens us with destruction if we don't. Their Jesus is God's ultimate nemesis, refusing to sin even when God threatens him with annihilation. The greatest hero in Islam is the devil himself who saves us from Allah's wrath by convincing us to sin so that God can forgive us because he's really, really desperate to show some mercy. Am I the only one who thinks there's something funny going on here? Well, if you can make any sense out of these mind-numbingly silly and bizarre teachings we keep finding whenever we open up the Quran and the Hadith, please let me know. In the meantime, to all you Muslims out there who are hearing this information for the first time, Merry Christmas. Peace on earth will come to all, we just follow the light. Let's give thanks to the Lord above, the Son of